There's not many things that I can say with a straight face are easier in Game Maker in 3D than they are in 2D, but you know what? The resolution of the screen is one of them. Hello all you crazy people out there. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. And let's talk about the resolution of the screen. I'm actually really surprised I didn't make this video a long time ago. It's been on my stack of future video topics for pretty much since the dawn of time. So if you've ever messed around with camera and view scaling in, uh, in 2D and Game Maker, uh, you've probably found that it hasn't been the most difficult thing in the world, but it has been a little bit of work. Uh, you do have to spend a little bit of time fiddling with the, uh, the view settings and the camera settings and that sort of thing until you find something that actually looks good to you. Um, if you're interested in scaling the view in 2D, uh, Pixelated Pope has, I believe, multiple videos on the subject, uh, which at the moment are uh, basically the, um, the go-to resource for anyone looking for information on the subject. Um, in 3D, it's actually quite a bit easier. We don't have to mess with the view or the camera settings or anything like that. Um, pretty much everything that I'm going to say in this video is going to be um, surfaces in disguise. So if you know surfaces like the back of your hand in Game Maker, then probably nothing that I'm going to say today is going to be news to you. So in this video, I'm going to be dealing with primarily the application surface, mostly just because that's the one that Game Maker provides for us, and uh, we don't have to make sure that it always exists or anything like that. But this will work. Everything that I talk about today will work with any surface that you try to draw to in Game Maker using the surface set target function. Uh, that's just like the fundamentals of surfaces in Game Maker. Uh, right now, our room is being rendered onto a onto an application surface that is 1600 by 900. Uh, that is the default size of the room. That is, I'm not using views. I don't think at the moment. Yeah, I'm not using views. So. Uh, with that being the case, Game Maker just automatically creates uh, the application surface on the game window at the size of the room. And as a result of that, the, uh, the canvas that we're going to be rendering onto is going to be exactly that. It's going to be 1600 by 900. Um, if I were to bump this up to uh, 1920 by 1080, then the default application surface that Game Maker is going to give us is going to be 1920 by 1080. Um, if I were to start the game in full screen, uh, over here, so that you can uh, you can see it a little bit better. Uh, you're going to see that at 1920 by 1080, the uh, the lines of all of the triangles that are rendered look reasonably smooth. Um, I am recording my screen. My monitor is 1080p, so I'm recording at 1080p, and uh, assuming that's what you're watching this on, uh, we should have a very smooth line on all of these triangles here without any jaggedness. Um, if you really squint at some of the uh, some of the triangles in the background that aren't as big, or maybe if you're watching this on a really big screen, uh, you might notice a little tiny bit of aliasing. But those circumstances notwithstanding, we are rendering uh, one pixel uh, sharp. There's no aliasing going on here. If, on the other hand, I was to set the size of the room to uh, can I make this can I make this like half of this like nine nine sixty by five forty, um, and maybe even smaller than that four eighty by two seventy. Then the application surface that we're going to render onto is going to be 480 by 270. Uh, Game Maker is going to do that automatically for us. We don't have to do any uh, fancy messing with uh, me messing with surfaces or the camera or anything like that. And if I were to run the game now, okay. Before I do that, and this doesn't actually have to do with resolution or surfaces or anything, but uh, the way that the objects in the room are randomly generated. Let me just hard code that to 1600 by 900 because if we're starting off with a tiny room. Things are not going to be randomly generated as uh, the same way that they were earlier. So uh, if I run this again, uh, we are going to see that the room looks basically the same as it did, but all of the pixels are much more, you know, pixely. Um, if I were to put my face right up close to uh, close to the boundary of a triangle, uh, you can see that the line is much more jagged because we are uh, essentially upscaling what we're drawing uh, by a factor of four. Um, again, in particular, in things that are farther away, uh, triangles that are smaller, they look, uh, you can see a lot more aliasing. The, uh, the horns on the, on the maiden head of the, of the pirate ship and, uh, and that sort of thing. Uh, this is being very upscaled and, uh, this, um, at low resolution, this shadow on the ship looks like some kind of funny dinosaur or, uh, maybe E.T. or something like that. Anyway, what am I doing again? So crucially, and this is the most important part, at least in my opinion, uh, the size of the camera has not changed. Uh, the amount of the level that you can see has not changed. The field of view is exactly the same. The aspect ratio is exactly the same. Uh, that hasn't changed regardless of the size of the surface that we're rendering onto. 
And as long as you don't touch the VM projection matrices, it's going to stay that way. And that's really nice because sometimes if you're not uh, if you're not careful about what you're doing in 2D in Game Maker, if you try to try to shrink the viewport or something, and I'm going to uh, disable start full screen, and I think I'm going to change the room size back to 1600 by 900. Sometimes in 2D, if you're not careful about exactly what you're resizing, uh, you can find that when you try to uh, when you try to zoom in or rather when you try to reduce the resolution um, that you might end up cutting off parts of uh, parts of the world that should be visible to the camera and that's a whole thing. Uh, some of Game Maker's camera functions and I don't know them off the top of my head because I, I spend all my my entire life in 3D now but um, I believe camera set view size is a wrapper for the, uh, the projection matrix, the orthographic projection matrix and once in a while, when people try to downscale their game, uh, they end up zooming in instead. Anyway, uh, most of the time, when you really get into the weeds of, uh, of 3D and Game Maker, uh, you inev inevitably end up disabling the application surface. Uh, application surface draw enable. That's the one I want, right? I'm second guessing myself now. Should be that. Uh, this will allow us to manually take control of drawing the application surface later. Uh, you can use the draw GUI event for this. Um, it's probably more correct to use post draw for this. Uh, this should be application surface at zero zero on the screen. All right, wonderful. If you draw the application surface yourself, um, you are allowed to uh, resize. You're allowed to resize the application surface and you could set this to a value that is of some other dimension than uh, the size of the game window. Uh, setting the application surface to be one-to-one -one with the game window would have you setting the, uh, the height and width to window, uh, window get width and window get height like this. Whereas if you wanted it to be half resolution, you could say window get height divided by two, uh, window get width divided by two, and that would give you um, an application surface that is half the size. Uh, this is a uh, this is not filling the screen, obviously as you can see. Uh, if you want a half size application surface to fill the screen uh, in post draw, you can say draw surface stretched. Uh, the width can be window get width. And the height can be window get height. And this will have it fill the entire screen. I'm not going to have this running in full screen mode, but um, you should be able to see even here that there's a little bit of aliasing happening. Each of the pixels on the in the game window are two pixels, um, like two pixels square. And there's a little bit of aliasing on things like, um, well, wherever you look, really. So the, uh, the size of the application surface one you're rendering to doesn't have to be an integer scale factor of the, um, the size of the game window if you want to. And uh, honestly, there are probably not too many situations where this is something that you actually want to do. Um, you could have the, um, the application surface be half the width of the game window and like some other value, one fifth of the height of the game window. And this is going to cause the game to be a little bit stretched in the, uh, the vertical direction. Hang on. Instead of doing that, it should be more clear what's happening if I set it to um, one to one with the game window uh, width and uh, one fifth the height. And you can see that this is, uh, this is causing the game to appear a little bit more, uh, a little bit streaky in the horizontal direction, like it's been stretched, which, you know, it has. Uh, you can also hard code this value. You can have it rendering. You can have the game rendered to an internal resolution of like 960 by uh, 540, and you can uh, you can blow it up from there. This is about half resolution. This would be the same thing as what I had the uh, the first time. 960 by 540, and um, if you're experiencing performance issues in a game, uh, dropping the dropping the size of the uh, the render target like this. Uh, can help because that will cut down on the number of fragments rendered by the fragment shader and uh, the fragment shader tends to be the uh, the heavier part of like what's actually being drawn on the screen. Uh, this won't help if your bottleneck in your game is in, on the GML side, on the CPU side, but 
for graphics heavy games it can. I, uh, I made a whole series on optimizing 3D games in Game Maker last year, so if that's the sort of thing that you are are concerned by, uh, you might want to go and um, you might want to go and give that a watch. If you've ever poked around in the quality settings of uh, of other video games and seen something to the effect of uh, resolution scale or um, internal rendering resolution or uh, scale factor or anything like that, that's pretty much what this is. Um, other games that are using a newer graphics API than Game Maker does uh, can do other things to hide the fact that they are um, upscaling the game world further, uh, but Game Maker unfortunately does not give us currently access to things such as uh, deep learning super sampling. For the time being, at least, we're, uh, we're rather limited to, and I'm going to cut this in half again. Let's go uh, 540, uh, 5, 540? What's half of 960? 480 by, uh, by 270. And we can uh, GPU set text filter. Set that to true when we're drawing the application service and false otherwise. And that should be at least a little bit of, uh, of anti-aliasing when the application service is uh, scaled up. Actually, that looks even worse. Okay, never mind. Don't do that. Anyway, I have used a... Uh, I have used a resolution scale trick in um, last year when I made when I made that tower defense game. Uh, basically, as a way to get it running on, at like 30 frames per second on a Raspberry Pi. And definitely, if you drop the uh, application surface size below like half, uh, it really starts to become noticeable. But if you're at like three quarters uh, or so, it's probably probably won't scale too badly unless you really squint. But as, uh, as many of these video subjects are, uh, that's up for you to decide how you want to deal with it. Man, I just completely zoned out there. What was I even doing? So this should only... Everything that I've done here really should only affect what is drawn to the application surface or the other surface that you're targeting. Um, anything that's drawn in the actual draw event, things that are drawn to the GUI layer should not ideally be scaled with the, uh, the application surface size. That which you would think would behave that way by default, being completely independent from the size of the application surface, uh, will, uh, will also be scaled if you're not careful. So, uh, font game. This is Calibri bold size 20. I'm going to make this regular and size like 24 or something. Hopefully that way it becomes a little bit more apparent um, if, I, uh, if I scale it. So if I add a draw GUI event, and if I were to uh, draw set font, and if I were to draw text in the corner, uh, this can be, this text should not be scaled with the application surface. Okay, that's just gonna draw some uh, some text in the corner of the screen. If I were to go into something like the step event and write some code so that I can change the size of the application surface on the fly, let's say if keyboard uh, keyboard check pressed so it doesn't happen continuously, VK, let's put this on F5. No, I actually hit F5 instead of 5 and that ran the game. Um, we can surface resize. I feel like that's not the first time I've typed surface reset. Um, F5 can be our base resolution 900p. F5 is going to be 900p. F6 is going to make the application surface 720p, and F7 is going to make the application surface a, a, a very, a very pixelated 540 by 270. And if I were to run the game now, uh, we're going to see that I am not actually drawing anything to the to the GUI layer. Uh, why is that? Do I need to like, do I need to clear the font cache after, after resizing the font? All right, there we go. So we can see if I, if I hit F5 to make it one to one, um, when I cycle through these, uh, the, the GUI layer is indeed not going to be, uh, perfectly scale independent of the application surface. That's a little bit annoying and I wish it wouldn't do that by default unless you like specifically asked it to behave like that. Um, there is a, there's a handful of functions related to the way that the, uh, the game maker GUI layer is drawn. Uh, display set GUI maximize is the one that I'm looking for. Uh, there's a bunch of optional parameters relating to the actual scale that you give it, but if you just, uh, leave its parameter list empty, or I believe, uh, give it negative one, negative one, 
then the application surface will not be scaled. Uh, the, the GUI layer, rather, will not be scaled with the application surface. Um, F, F5, so 900p, F6. And you can actually see it like becoming a little bit, a little bit more pixely when I do that. Uh, the um, the text on the GUI layer stays the same. F7, uh, pixel madness, GUI layer stays the same. Uh, generally speaking, if you do anything at all remotely resembling 3D in GameMaker, you're going to want uh, display set GUI maximize with no parameters to be your uh, your user interface scaling, and that way you can do things such as uh, display the player's health, and I don't know what else would you put on the on the user interface like a quest icon or something like that, some other heads up display. And that will not be affected in any way, shape, or form by the uh, the size of the render target. All right, what else is there when it comes to um, when it comes to uh, cameras and resolution scale? So again, um, nothing that I've done nothing that I've done here has uh, has in any way touched the uh, the camera matrix. Where would that be? That would that would be in the draw event here. Either of them, for that matter, uh, neither the uh, the base um, camera that is rendering the actual scene. Uh, nor the uh, the extra stuff up here with uh, rendering the shadow map for the shadows. Um, I did mention this like loosely when it came to uh, shadow mapping and the shadow map resolution. I guess that's kind of the same thing. Uh, the shadow map is still being rendered at uh, 2048 by 2048, which uh, which is another thing you can drop down if you want to, uh, to implement something along the lines of a quality setting in your game, but that is a... Uh, I talked about that in the shadow mapping videos. I think I'll leave it there. So I think that's going to do it for me for today. Um, I really hope this video doesn't turn out to be all over the place because this is, I think, a very interesting topic. And it is one of the topics that I've been kind of ignoring for a while now, and I am kind of glad to have it, uh, have it out there now. So, my name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. If you want the code for this, uh, look for the GitHub repository down in the video description. Uh, we should have all of our all of our changes um, logged in the commit. Let me just get rid of these fonts.old.pngs because nobody really cares about those. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, there will be links to that in all the usual places. Uh, you can see some fun things like your name in the credits or uh, get a verbal shout out of your name at the end of every video. Uh, about once a month I post a preview of my future plans, that kind of thing. And if you wanted to pledge, I would definitely appreciate it. Otherwise, I try to post about two game dev videos a week. One tutorial tutorial like this, and one let's make a game. I do like to make videos on the weirder things that you can do in Game Maker, such as this. And if you want to see any of it in action, uh, then hopefully let's make a game will we'll have that covered. Uh, otherwise, I hope you found this useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Zenjamin, Then Nothing Happened, Square Crow, Sindra Larson, Posho, Gunnar Clovis, Game Maker, Emily Coyo, Edward Hult, DJ Gibbles, and Army Umbrester for supporting these videos. If you want to see your name in the credits or hear yourself shouted out at the end like this, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.